done, I kind of like already made the decision. I told my mom and she wasn't like, it's great because she's like super supportive. But I think at that time, like, especially for culinary school, I don't think anybody really knew like what the benefits were. It wasn't like a college, you know what I mean? It's like in 2000, that's like 2010. So like back then it wasn't like, oh, you can go to the CIA and like, that's like a reputable school. Not that it isn't. It's just like, it was all so new, you know, like. I think at that time, like, culinary, that industry just wasn't really, like, what it is now, you know? Like, at least for me, like, I had limited resources as to, like, what was actually out there. Yeah. Um, so, and a lot of that's how, like, a lot of my career started. Um, what did you decide to do? So, for me, like, I decided to go to culinary school. And I remember talking to my dad. There was an instance where I was, like, I went back to Riverside. I left San Marcos. And, um, like, I was going to go check out... Um, the art institute in orange county yeah and i was just still trying to figure it out like this is what i wanted to do but i remember talking to my dad and like um we were having lunch and i was also looking into being a cop because at that point like i was still kind of with this girl and um i was just it, it was stupid like to be that young and have that kind of pressure to be like oh like you know I want to be able to provide for a family. There was like this yeah, life yeah, I yeah. imagine that like, I was like, okay, like if I'm a cop, I can make this much money and I can do this. Yeah. But I think like that was like, for me, that lunch was super important with my dad because he was like, you know, he was a chef, de- chef, um, sorry, sheriff deputy his whole life. And, um, when I talked to him, he goes, I remember him looking like not that excited. Like for me, I was like, Oh, this is like, he's going to love this. And then he was like, you know, if you're going to do this, like, don't just be like a patrol cop, like go and be like a detective and and, like keep on moving up and a lieutenant and things like that. Like, don't just be like this one like level, you know, like whatever you're going to do, like if you want to do that, like be more than just a patrol cop. And I just remember thinking like, shit, like, okay, I'm not going to be a cop now. Um, but also like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you're like, I ain't trying to be no fucking detective. Dog. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, I mean, they would have been cool, but I got to write in a little notepad and shit. I can't yeah, write that yeah. small. Yeah. I mean, maybe it could have been like true detective kind of thing, but, um, but no, I think like for me, it was I, I, like at that point, I think a lot of it was, is that like, I saw that my dad wasn't that excited about yeah, me for deciding sure. to be that. But what was, what I took the most out of it, like I said, was like. Um, like whatever I was going to do, I wasn't just going to be that entry level or one level, you know? So I went to the art Institute in Orange County and, um, like toured the facility and in one second. Oh, no problem. We are at Octavia right now. There's people at the door. That's what's going on. There's uh porters here cleaning stuff. That's what you guys are listening to right now. Um, so like I went there and it was, it was cool. Like you know, it was, it's shiny. There's all these cool kitchen tools yeah. and you get like fresh whites and stuff like that. So um, I decided to go there and um, you know I think I, I guess I, I decided to go there because like um, I didn't really know what the world was like in terms of cooking. So like to get an introductory to it, like uh-huh. learning the foundations and things like that, like. I mean, I intended to go there to, like, get the, like, bachelor's degree program and, uh-huh. like, do the hospitality management. But, you know, once I started to get into it, like, there was these chefs who would talk about stages and, you know, um, they would talk about, like, what it takes. Like, some chefs worked in New York. Some chefs, like, were just teachers. But then other chefs, like, some of them worked for Thomas Keller and things yeah. like that. So, like, you get to, like, meet these people and talk to them and really figure it out. Because, like, for me, like, I grew up in Riverside and Moreno Valley. So, like, that – there's there's nothing out there that's, like, you know, chef-driven or, like, yeah, anything yeah. that's going on. Like, you know, we're going out and, like, you know, Cheesecake Factory and the Elephant Bar, like, fancy yeah. restaurants for And us, that's, like, you know? amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's I mean, like, yeah. oh, my God. For my yeah. mom is the Chili's. Yeah, hey, yeah. Like, and, that is, and, like, the fine dining restaurant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I remember there's this place. There was this one place in Riverside. I think it's, like, called Mario's. And, like, that was the place. It was, like, an yeah, Italian yeah, yeah. Italian restaurant. And it's, like. And then you go back like, to Mario's and you're, like, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, you're, like, oh. <laughs> like, like, yeah, you being a cook yeah. at, like, Air Force Village West is, like, oh, I got to go be a cook at Mario's. And yeah. I was, like, no. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. But. So, um, 
I started at the Art Institute in Orange County and like you're meeting all these people and then like in Orange County there's like a little bit more of like that level of restaurant like there's this um really great restaurant called Marche Modern and that was like this French chef who like super intense and his food was like really beautiful and like he had this the space was amazing it was like above Nordstrom's in the um South Coast Plaza yeah and like that was the place and like some people would go there and do their internship there and then if you got a job there you were like the shit you're right? like, yeah, like yeah yeah like on the cover of like the stupid newsletter and, like, yeah, yeah. at the college you know and uh <laughs> so you meet people like that and then I had like um there was this person uh like an old family friend um and she used to say like oh like if you want to be anything you got to go work at charlie palmer's and that charlie palmer had just opened up a restaurant in um bloomsdale so you're like here oh, i go baby. Bloomingdale. um yeah i was like shit okay like if charlie palmer's the guy like <laughs> let me go check it out like i don't i don't know and i honestly don't even know how i got that stage i think i emailed the chef at the time yeah it? so amar santana was the chef the executive chef of that location but his cdc was this guy the chef kim and um I, I think I emailed him. I don't even know how I got his email or whatever. I, don't, I honestly don't know how I got in there. But, like, I ended up stodging there. Yeah. Uh, and I was there for, like, a month. And, you know, like, it was crazy because, like, they were so, like, intense. And, like, they all came from New York. Like, that whole, sh- yeah. um, like, Kim and, and Amar Santana were, like, from Areol. And they, like, came. And they're in Orange County. And they're, like, oh, they're, like, pushing really hard and, like talking about all the cooks out here in the california kitchens and stuff like that I'm like, sucks. dude i don't even know yeah. <laughs> like, yeah and it was crazy being there and those were the kinds of things that like i remember meeting this chef um brent and he was like from orange county but he had like worked in some really intense kitchens yeah according to theirs like you know like for him i remember like being across from him and it's like service and he's doing like specials and things like that and he was like you know like little things you learn and like um, I just remember him saying like, never take a job for money and like always like look for these kinds of things and, um, skill over money. Yeah. Skill over money. And like, you know, obviously like you have to have a lot of passion for like what you're doing because like what's required of you is yeah. like, it's a lot, you know, it takes a lot. Like it's more than what you get paid. Yeah, of course. And it's like, you know, you, that theme is like always like there's, I think now, now it's like obviously like you have to know your worth too right yeah and exactly. for me like it took a while to figure that out and it also like i mean i also weigh out like what the future holds you know i'm not really looking into like face value things but if i can get into a place where like the opportunities like really um like the opportunity to grow or the opportunity to learn is like outweighs like what i'm making like yeah. that's kind of wh- that, how that's i've what always matters, so yeah. yeah that's always how it's I've hard to make that switch from being a cook and thinking that way to okay now i'm a chef i deserve to be paid this much yeah or you know it, it, it is difficult because like yeah because sometimes like i mean i just remember like i think I'm not going to say everybody feels this way, but I know, like, sometimes when you become a sous chef, you're like, wow, these line cooks are making more than me an hour. Because, like, if you if you really, like, calculate, like, how many hours you're there and your salary and stuff, yeah. sure. But it's also, like, I've always felt like, well, at least mine's consistent. Like, yeah, it's it's holidays <laughs> now, but, like, you know, like, in springtime, like, they're going to be dying for hours, you know? Like, I don't care. I love you know? the justification of the hard work. <laughs> yeah. You're like this is gonna pay off in six months when it's slow. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <Yeah. laughs> like, awesome. I'm still gonna get paid the same. Yeah. Um, but I mean, not that it was like you were there for less hours, but I mean, at least like yeah. it's like okay, cool. Yeah, it's December. Of course, the line cooks are making a shit ton of money. There's buyouts and overtime and everything. Like whatever. Um, but yeah, no. So for me, you know, that was a really cool kitchen to be in. Uh, even if it was just like a month, and a lot of the chefs that were like super, like just seeing how they worked and their work ethic and like how service played out and like you know i didn't really get to plate a lot of things or do a lot because like honestly it was like my first like real professional kitchen yeah but i and then i remember like i went in for dinner and i was dating this girl we went in and they knew and like they took care of us so it was so crazy to like have experience like that that type of hospitality level of hospitality is yeah and i was just a stage like i you know i was 
I was stupid. Like, you know, like I remember like blending a soup and like, you know, they left it on high and I didn't check. And the chef's like, dude, you need to chill. Like you're going to burn your face off. And you know, it's like, I'm like, damn, like these people barely know me. Yeah. I, like in my head, I just like messed up so many times or fucked up, like whatever. Like, cause everything for me, it's just like, I'm so hard on myself. And I think all of us are in this in extent. You're just like, fuck, I'm like yeah. worthless, you know? I suck. <laughs> yeah. But I remember just going and, like, ordering a couple of things and then like, sending out all this other stuff. And I, at that time, I wasn't able to drink. But it's like... And your girl's like, yeah, baby. I know. She's like, I'm with you forever. <laughs> yeah, right. <Yeah. laughs> but, but, uh, so for me, it was like... It was such a cool experience. And I was like, like, this... This is, like... This is what it's all about, right? Yeah. Like, all the hard work and 100%. all those kinds of things. Like, it, it, it all... Like that night, like it all just made sense, and it all just kind of came full circle. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I knew I wanted to stay in it, so like I'm still in culinary school. And then, like you know, for me after doing that stage with Charlie Palmer, um, I just I wanted to get a job. And I think at that point, like I don't remember ever talking to him about a job. And yeah. I think like you know I was still too new, and like the people who were there like were super experienced, and like there were they were pretty fresh from their opening. So like a lot of them were from New York and that that's kind of like the kitchen they wanted to be in. But yeah, then I was like, okay, I want to like, I need to get a job, you know, I want to do something, even though I'm in school, like I'll work it out or whatever. Cause like same thing, college, like you can adjust your schedule to whatever you need it to. So, um, at that point, like I remember, um, seeing a flyer for like, uh, uh, job fair for capital grill. So the Capitol Grill is like this um, kind of uh, steakhouse chain. I don't mm-hmm. know. They're no, really yeah. big on the Dude, East Coast. Capitol yeah, Grill yeah, is yeah, everywhere, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those motherfuckers Super are huge on the East Coast. so many cooks. <laughs> yeah. So the Capitol Grill, like at that point, it only had one location in Beverly Hills, and they were going to open up in South Coast Plaza. So I was like, oh, cool. Like I want to I wanna do this. I want to be here. Like, yeah. You know, it's – for me, like, at, like it was – it was just an experience to open up a restaurant. It was an experience to like, you know, be on the line and work and like get a, get a line cook job. You know, at that point, like I, I was a dishwasher server, like, you know, cook, like not in that type of service or anything. So, um, I remember going to the interview and I was like in my uniform at, from school, which yeah, it's embarrassing. And then, <laughs> you, you got your thermometer and your pen no, and your I notepad in the pocket God, no. or what? <laughs> no, no. But, you know, you have the, our instant signia and you're like, oh. Yeah. I mean, well, at that point, you're just like, well, I, just, I, well, I don't have any other whites. Oh, know? when I used to stage uh, or when I, we used to when I used to work at the restaurant in Meadowood and we used to get stages from the CIA. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to go up to them and be like, hey, man, just like get rid of your thermometer and your pen and your like you don't you don't need that just hide it yeah, yeah. <laughs> have it on you but hide it yeah put that in your knife kit yeah dude it's <laughs> like you know you don't want to be that that guy <laughs> that's funny <laughs> it just shows how much you know yeah yeah like you know if somebody puts their thermometer in their front chest pocket it doesn't make them a bad cook you no. just know that they haven't been doing it that long yeah you know? yeah and i it's a, a lot of it for me too is like that's kind of what i think about too i mean it's hard and this is something i've always worked on it's like you know Everybody starts from somewhere, right? Yeah. It's like sometimes when you you're so far removed from that point in your career, it's hard for you to re- remember that. Exactly. But then it's like you know, it is important to recognize that, like you know, for me, like even going to uh, the Capitol Grill and the and the interview process, it's like you know, that's all I knew at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like I remember sitting in the interview and talking to the chef, and he was like. You know, I was like, I just want to be a prep cook. And he goes, no, you're going to be a line cook. And I was like, are you serious? I was like, I, yeah. <laughs> me? I was like, I don't, I don't me? know if I can do this. You feel um, pretty? You're like, Ooh. Yeah, I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> they love me. Are you asking me out? <laughs> yeah. But then I also remember like having a, the sous chef interview me. And he's like, how many parts per million need to be in the sanitation like water? And I'm like. And you're like 115, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, no, What's yeah. up? 200. What's up, What's up bro? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um the and fucking numbers never leave you. Yeah, they don't. They don't. Yeah, What's fucking, the time temperature danger zone? Uh, I know, like, oh, right? Oh, God. Oh, you're you like know? 141 to 140 unless you live in fucking California. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. It's like, <laughs> and it's like, yeah. So it, it was, it was, you know, getting that job was really cool because it was like, I remember um, there was another person from my culinary school who was really good and yeah. she had gotten a job there and we were working the station together. So I was like, oh, I'm in the right place, you know, like. 
Um, and, you know, I worked Gar and it was, it was intense. Like, that station was, like, you had, like, several different salads. And I worked lunch, too. So, it was like, sometimes you come in, there's, like, 150 